How to square up stock on a milling machine with a face mill. There are multiple ways of doing this. This method is the way that's shown in most textbooks and is also the easiest concepts for apprentices to understand. Okay, let's get started right now. Side 1. But which one is side 1? Best practice dictates that the larger surface is side 1. You're already touching. Move away. We'll take a smaller amount. See how we're not cleaning up? So we're going to take a smaller amount. Now you can use your power feed if you want, or you can feed by hand. Let's try our power feed out. That's about the kind of finish we want with this cutter. We don't want it super shiny. You want it kind of grayish. And you always want to make sure that you're taking a chip. You don't want to be spinning it so fast and feeding really slow that you're getting uh, shavings coming off instead of actual chips. So now that we just touched off and we took the skim off, we're going to want to take a measurement, a measurement here, and then we're going to want to take half of the amount because this is a cold rolled piece, you want to take half the amount to stop warpage in the block. Okay, so what we've machined now, we've machined surface number one. Now we want to machine surface number two. We've deburred it. Always deburr your parts after you're finished machining them. Now we have a pin. Let's talk about why we need the pin. We're going to take surface number one and put it up against a solid jaw. So let's say this had a big taper to it. And if I were to put it in without a pin, how do I know it's not going to go up against this side or this side? I don't know. So we use a pin as a pivot point. So we put the pin in. The key with the pin is it needs to be in the center or center-ish of what's inside of the vise. So here, it could go down here. But you don't want to have this sitting on the edge and then have it on the bottom because that could make it roll this way. Okay, so you want to be in the center of what's left in the vise. So I'm going to put this guy in here like this. I don't need to tap it down because the bottom isn't finished. So I'm going to put this guy in, put this in about the middle and clamp it there. We're going to deburr our block and then flip over to surface number three. So with this one, I'm going to want to put a small parallel underneath, then put this guy down, only to keep the height set because we this guy's already machined and I want to make this parallel to here. I'm not putting two down and tapping it down, I'm just putting one down. So I can put it this way or I can put it that way. And the only reason why that's there is to make sure that I'm actually down so I can't pull out the parallel. So again with the pin, this is surface number three. Okay, I guess that's a, a Ray blooper one. <laughs> okay, so we're going to, to actually, thank you very much. Head won't come off of this one. We're down, it's nice and tight, that parallel won't slide out. And then we can machine surface number three. Okay, so now we're going to machine surface number four. This is surface number one. This is surface number two. This is surface number three. Now we're going to machine surface number four. Surface number one is tapped down onto parallels, which will make surface number four parallel to surface number one.
Now we have all of these blocks squared around. They're parallel and perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to put this guy in and I'm going to tilt it a small amount. Well, in this case, I'm tilting it a huge amount. I'm going to tilt it a huge amount. And I'm going to take my square and go up against it here, just like this. And then I'm going to tap it until I come into, into square. There you go. Perfectly square. If you're having a hard time seeing, what helps sometimes is to use a light source or a piece of paper in behind the workpiece. Now that we have all five sides done, we're going to place it on the fifth side on top of parallels, tap it, tap it down with a hammer, and then machine it to size. And then our block is nice and square. To check this block, I would like to use a direct measuring instrument. So I'm going to use this squareness checker or you may also know it as a squareness comparator. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test, this is the piece that we were squaring up. I'm gonna test this piece for squareness. I know this is a little overkill. Normally you'd use a square, but for all milling operations, they need to be within five thou. So I'm gonna test this side here. And I'm about one and a half thou down. Then I'm gonna go on to this side here. And I'm about a half thou down. So I'm about a half thou out of square this way. Now I'm going to test squareness this way. Okay, I'm up about seven thou. And I'm down about eight thou. So therefore, I'm out seven and a half thou this way. And that's too much because I'm only allowed to be out five thou. So this piece has to be sent back to be reworked. If you want to see other great videos relating to machining and math, please check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll take care of the rest. Have a great night.